Hey guys, welcome back. So now that we know how to save and load our game, we need to build a menu for our players so that they can decide if they want to start a new game or continue on from a save point. But before we do that, I want to show you guys something. If you guys will remember when we hit play, we wait a couple seconds here on our main screen before being taken to our second level. Now I don't know if you guys caught that, so I'm going to pause this. If we hit play here and I hit pause, if you guys see on our main screen here we have our health bar we have score and if you look over here in the world outliner panel we have a whole bunch of actors that got spawned into the level one of them being our third person character here so he's somewhere off in the darkness falling through space and we don't need any of this stuff to be in this level this is just supposed to be a menu so that the player can select if they want a new game or to start a to load up a saved game. So why is all of this stuff in here? Well, if we take a look at our world settings, we see this game mode here says none. And the, since it has nothing here, we haven't told the game um, which game mode we want to play in this level. What it does is it's going to give us our default. And if we go into our project settings to maps and modes, you guys will remember that we set our default game mode to tutorial game mode. So that means that any time we don't specify a game mode, it's going to use the tutorial game mode. And in this case, we don't want that to happen. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to create a new game mode. So we'll go to Blueprint Class, Game Mode Base here, and we'll call this Menu Game Mode. And we'll open this up. And all we're going to do in here is change a couple things. So we don't need a default pawn class because this is going to be a menu. We can leave the spectator pawn as it is. We don't need a HUD. And the player controller, we're going to create a new controller for this. So let's compile this for a second. We'll right click here, go to blueprint class, player controller, and we'll call this menu controller. And now we can go back into our game mode and we'll select our menu controller. Compile and save. And we can set the world settings now of our main menu to our menu game mode. Now we'll open up our menu controller. And the only thing I want to do in here is if we go over here on the right side panel, it says show mouse cursor. We'll select that. We'll hit compile and save. And now we'll be done. Now if I hit play, nothing comes up, which is good. OK, so now we need to work on making an actual main menu. Right now, if we go to our uh, Blueprint tab up here and open the level Blueprint, we'll see that we're casting to our game instance and then selecting load game. So if I double click on this, the load game function checks if we have a save game. And then if we do, it'll load it up. If not, it'll open our first level. So we really don't want this to just be determined by you know waiting a few seconds here, and then we're going to fire that off. What we would like is to have that linked to whether or not the player you know, clicks on a menu button. So we're going to have a button for new game. We're going to have a button for load a saved game. So we're going to right click here in the content browser, and we're going to create a new widget. And this is going to be our main menu widget. And we'll double click on this. And what I'm going to do is go down to panel. And we'll get a vertical box. And we'll just drag that right out into the center. We'll put this anchor to the center here. And we'll just scale this up. that. And all I'm going to do is add two buttons to this box. Maybe we don't need it to be this big. Okay. And I'm going to set fill for both of these buttons. And on top of the first button, we're going to drop a text box or text. And same thing with the second button. 
and I will call this new game and we'll call this one saved game and we can change the color of these to something that's a little bit easier to read okay so now we have a couple buttons and we're going to go into our graph well, let's rename these buttons so we don't get confused this is new game button and this is save game button and now we'll come into our graph we don't need any of this and if you click on one of these buttons you'll see over here we have some events and what we want to do is create an event for on clicked so we'll select that and we'll do the same thing for save game on clicked and what we want to do on clicked of the new game is say open level and the level we want to open is first level now for our saved game we right click here and say construct we'll cast to our game instance drag out of here say get game instance and we can right click over here and promote this to a variable game instance ref and now that we have our game instance we can drag out here say get game instance and we can call the load game function And what this will do is it'll go into our game instance. And if somebody clicks, you know, load up a saved game, it'll check if we have one. And if not, it'll still open the first level. But if we do, it'll open the saved game for them. So now we can go back into our widget. I think that's pretty much all we need to do in here. So now we'll go to our main menu. We're going to get rid of this part where it says delay and then it goes right into our game instance and what we want to do is create widget and the widget we want to create now is our main menu and we will get player controller and then off of here we'll say add to viewport now we can hit compile and save and now if we hit play, let's see our little menu comes up. And if I hit saved game, oh, we might not have a saved game. If I hit new game, we start in level one. So let me collect these coins. So now we go to level two. I'll hit escape. We'll hit play. Now I'll hit saved game. And now it's taking us to level two. So if we hit play again, we hit new game, you see it'll start us back at level one. And that's how you guys can create the basic functionality for a main menu. I hope you guys thought that was helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.